Uh, Minister, it's 60 years since the government legalised forced adoptions in this country and still over 60,000 files remain closed. Uh, the Philomena project was launched to pressurise <coughs> push campaign for the release of those files and this is a campaign that I believe um, should be listened to and should be acted on and that question is asked in that context. Thank you. Minister. Thank you, Deputy. Um, as you say, uh, Deputy, the Adoption Act of 1952 placed adoption on a regulatory footing in Ireland and in accordance with the law, all adoptions taking place since then were, complied, were required to comply with that Act and subsequent le legislation. Approximately, uh, you quote a figure of 60,000 and you use the phrase forced adoptions, which I want to address. But I am advised by the Adoption Authority that 44,042 adoptions took place in Ireland between 1953 and 2012. So that's adoptions under the law, 44,000. Very significant changes in society and adoption trends have taken place in the intervening period with just 49 domestic adoptions in 2012, 49, compared with an average of over 1,000 per annum taking place through the 60s, 70s, 80s, in line with the laws of the day. I'm also aware, Deputy, that some arrangements were put in place in earlier decades that were not put in the provision of any legislation, and people did assume that they were adopted uh, when they, in fact, were not. And there were also births which were the uh, subject of illegal registrations. Um, I do note the recent statement by the Adoption Rights Alliance which suggests that there are over 60,000 adoption files, inverted commas, adoption files held by the HSE, private adoption agencies and church representatives, all of which are the sole sources of people's identity. This is not necessarily the same as the proposition put forward in your question, Deputy, which suggests that there exists 60,000 files on forced adoptions. I'm not quite sure what, you know, I, I do have to say that, I'm not quite sure what, what uh, the meaning of, of the forced adoption is in your question, uh, because I am trying to highlight to you the, you know, the actual information that is available and the legality of uh, those adoptions, as opposed to perhaps a legal or other, um, other acts that may have taken place. Uh, so I would point out that where records do exist, it is to be expected that many of those relate to the tens of thousands of adoptions conducted in line with the laws of the day. Furthermore, it is worth noting that while records exist in relation to past adoption, the nature of these records may vary greatly, and many of the records may not be as detailed or as expansive as current day processes would require. Thank you. The balance of your, um, the remainder of your reply would be in the official record. Okay, thank you. One minute. John Corla. Thank you. Well, sir, yes, I, I, I take on board your um, correction, possibly, of the wording of the question, but I think that while adoption may have been legalised in 1962, certainly I know personally of a number of forced adoptions that took place after that time, and while they may have been legal, they may, they may still also have been forced and against the will of the, the mothers in, the, in those cases. And there's no doubt that a lot of the information in the records may not be as complete as they, they would be expected to be now in that, but I still think that the access to those records is vitally important for um, mothers who are trying to trace their children and also for um, children who might want to trace their biological parents. So I think the key thing here is to make the records available and to make access to them available to the people that want to source them. And whether they are complete or not is something that we basically have to um, deal with. And I think the people who will be looking will understand that as well, that they may not be provide all the information that they want. But the key thing is to make sure that they're available and allow that access so that people can get some completion in their lives. Thank you. Um, I, I'd also like for the benefit of the House to say uh, that uh, the, the Adoption Act 2010 um, does say that agencies uh, providing information and tracing can uh, uh, has resulted in various services uh, getting accreditation not to apply for the accreditation and transferring uh, records from their mother and baby homes and adoption societies to the Child and Family Agency. So, for example, um, the case of the Sacred Heart Adoption Society, 25,000 records have been transferred 
uh, to the agencies, that's the Child and Family Agencies, Adoption Service in Cork. So 25,000 files are now with the Child and Family Agency that were previously with effectively a private adoption agency. And a lot of work um, has taken place on organising the storage of these files. Um, there is a massive job involved. And in the legislation I will bring forward, I will make it statutory for all records that are being held by private individuals or agencies uh, to make sure to, uh, that, that those records are available to a central authority. Thank you. And that will mean that any records that we can access um, will be uh, known about and can be archived and made more easily accessible. Deputy. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Minister, for, for that response. Um, just uh, finally, just Minister, in relation to the archive in Cork and that, are you satisfied that there's adequate staff there to archive the records and to provide access and, and search files for people who have, um, want to trace them? Because I have heard reports <coughs> of, I think it's a very small number of staff there and the and ability to actually um, research the files in a timely fashion. And while I do appreciate that they need, so many files need to be archived, um, are the resources in place to make sure that they are archived and made available? Um, well, I have had discussions with the Child and Family Agency in relation to the importance of this issue because obviously uh, for the individuals concerned it's absolutely key that they get access to these records as quickly as possible. Um, there hasn't been a national approach to adoption services before now and I have asked and uh, uh, Gordon Jays, the uh, uh, CEO of the agency, um, has advised me that it's reorganising the adoption services in 2014 at a national level and it will consider how best to deploy staff uh, to deal with this important issue uh, so as to facilitate access to the records. And clearly we've had a, quite a number of social workers who've been involved in assessment. And while assessments are still taking place in relation to adoption, clearly the inter-country and the international situation in relation to adoption has changed very considerably. And so it should be possible that social workers who were previously involved in assessment should now be able to move to help people more on the tracing side. But I do want to say that there is still considerable demand for assessments and people are entitled under the law to have an assessment um, even though the reality is that very few uh, relatively speaking inter-country or national adoptions are taking place so there is still a demand for assessments even though because people obviously are hopeful that they may be able uh, to adopt and as we reach agreement with different countries that the numbers of children available for inter-country adoption will increase um, so it is an issue um, to that has to be considered the level of resources that we can make available, but every effort will be made to respond to individual queries.